17,000 of you watched my last video with Erica as she spilled exactly how she built a website template shop, which has done millions in sales. So today I wanted to take it deeper beyond the highlights of her shop, which we discussed in the last video and get into the really practical bits. What makes a best-selling website template? How does she decide from all of the ideas in her mind which ones to actually create? And what kind of demo content is best in order to make the template sell? Enjoy this interview with Erica Hartwick, the founder of the ever popular Squarespace template shop, Big Cat Creative. Hello friends and welcome back to another video. I have such a treat for you. With me I have in the flesh Erica Hartwick from BigCatCreative.com. Erica and I did a video a few months back that was ridiculously popular about how Erica has done over a million dollars in sales from her website templates and I have brought her back to talk to me more about it. So I have a few questions for you that the people want to know the answers to. So okay, I'm ready. <laughs> if someone wants to create website templates and they're thinking, cool, I'm going to do this. This is the passive income product which I want to sell online. I wanna know a bit more about your like thought process of designing them and how exactly you're making the decisions. You've sold tons of templates over the time. Some are more popular than others. What goes into a really popular template and do you know when you're designing one, like which one is gonna be, you know, like a really, a really like the best seller? <laughs> okay, so, so assuming that you're sort of marketing all of your templates evenly, there's definitely ones that end up being more popular than others. For our audience, I, for what I see are the most popular templates are usually the ones that are hitting sort of the design trends or the design marks of the, the current moment, yeah, mm -hmm. of the time. So usually our most recent releases. like recent releases will be the most popular. This could be different depending on your audience because I know that our audience are, you know, they really value having an up-to-date sort mm -hmm. of, I hate using the word trends, but it is, a trend, it is yeah. a thing, mm -hmm. web design trends come and go. And I know that our customers really value having something that's up-to-date and modern and on trend. Mm -hmm. So. For us in particular, it's those ones that are really fresh and look good and hit all those marks for what's actually just popular at the moment. Mm -hmm. Or if you do have templates that are more specifically targeted towards different industries, mm -hmm. it might be a case of whatever industry that you're reaching more. So it could be a marketing thing in there. For example, if you had temp a template for a dentist, a template for a lawyer, and a template for a yoga studio, maybe the yoga studio one's doing best purely because you're only reaching that particular market. Yep. In your marketing but in our case we kind of have a one ideal customer or one customer for most of our templates and so so what I see is it's mostly to do with the aesthetics trendy. and mm -hmm. what they like the most yeah. yeah if you're wondering what is trendy in web design right now I just created a video on that so I will link that above and below for you that gives you an idea of what's trendy right at this moment I do release actually videos on web design trends mm -hmm. on every you know six months to a year or so so if you want more of those, hit the subscribe button and then uh, you can be up to date on what is cool yeah. and therefore <laughs> what to put in your template designs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so keeping up to date with those things can potentially be quite important for you know releasing templates that are really capturing people's attention mm -hmm. and making yep. sales. Yep. Next thing I want to know is how are you deciding on the design idea? So you sit down and you think, okay, get to create a new template today. How do you pick what this thing should look like. Of course, you're probably keeping in mind the web design trends because yeah. you know that's important, mm -hmm. but what else, like how are you choosing otherwise? What should be in this template specifically? Yeah, so this is what I recommend to everyone when they're starting with templates is to make sure that you've really focused on your ideal client or your ideal customer or whatever you want to call it first. Because if you, if you have that in your mind to start with and have a customer in your mind, everything on the template is just comes so much easier it's like picking the you know what goes on the pages what pages you're going to include what the color palette's going to be what images or like what demo images to show so having someone in mind to start with is just gonna it's like a snowball effect it's like mm -hmm. if you don't start with that it's actually going to be quite complicated and you're going to be constantly like backtracking and that makes sense okay yeah. so before i go to create a template i need to pick who is the ideal customer of this and yeah. how specific should that be should that be I want this to be bought by yoga studios or should that be more general? I want women in their thirties to buy this or I don't know, yeah. restaurants yeah. or something. <laughs> I think either way, 
So, you know, you've got your ideal customer for your entire business, and then you might specify that more per template potentially. Mm -hmm. So I know in our business, we kind of have a, a broader ideal customer and we do templates that sort of narrow down that customer into more specific niches. Mm -hmm. So for example, we might be targeting people that are starting their businesses, mostly females um, in our business. And then each template, we might have one for someone creating a course or someone starting a you know, a beautician business. Mm -hmm. And so we narrow them down like that. Mm -hmm. If you have a business that even has a more specific ideal customer. So if your business is literally just for, you know, yoga studios, yoga studios and you've got three templates for yoga studios, you know that, you know, all of those templates are going to be for yoga studios. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't really matter, but I think getting a little bit more specific with the template, if your business isn't super specific, is again just going to make it so much easier to make those decisions yes yeah. mm -hmm. because then you can that customer and you can almost look at it like you're doing a project for them mm -hmm. so you create a project brief you can write down all the pages that they would need write down what should be included on those pages and so much of that is industry specific so that is really helpful so if they have like a particular industry that will really help you get the structure and the content down of the template you know you just want to get into their mind and think like okay what what is this person like? What is this person attracted to? And how does this person want to like represent their business? So, mm -hmm. so much easier when you have that in mind because yep. all of those things come back to that person. And are you thinking at all about, for example, you look at your templates and you see, okay, I've got a lot of like fun, colorful ones. I want something more in this, I don't know, different, more neutral tone or something. Is that also, you're looking at what you currently have and what you sort of are missing in your shop. Is that a thought? Yeah, that's definitely a thought. It, again, it depends on the ideal customer because if for some reason you have a customer that is just like into bright stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly who that would be, but you're not going to go and create something just because it's missing. Yep. But um, yeah, like if there is a need to be filled, that's another way to come up with ideas. So looking at your shop and thinking like, okay, what what is missing here mm -hmm. is a good idea. And then if you have customers already, um, just listening to what they're asking for. So if they're saying like, hey, do you have a template for this? Or does you, do you have a template that includes something like this? Yeah. Or even though you can change colors and change fonts, you'll st you still might get people that ask like, hey, I really love this content, but like, do you have something that's a bit more neutral? Even though they can change those colors, it's still listening the to the customer. It's, it's just, how they're seeing it. Feels it. Yeah, set to them. Exactly. So you, be changed. yeah. So then you might think like, okay, well, it might be beneficial to create something similar in mm -hmm. a more of like a neutral vibe yep. because obviously there's a need for it. People are asking for it. So really listening to what your mm -hmm. customers are asking for or not even customers, people that potentially might be customers. Yep. And then I remember you also said at some point that you notice courses are obviously the trend of the internet. And mm -hmm. um, so you would have people messaging you wanting to purchase your templates and being like, hey, really need a sales page for a course. Yeah. So that's also something which you're paying attention to is when people are emailing, when people yeah. are sending live chats or whatever, what exactly are they asking for? And basically making a list yeah. of yeah. those things. Exactly. You know, once you get over a certain amount of questions asking the same thing, it's a really good sign to create it because <laughs> yeah. it'll probably sell because there's probably like thousands of other people who haven't taken the effort to reach out and ask. So yeah. yes, anytime I get a question or a comment or anything, I do note that one person might have said that, but probably 15 other people were thinking that and just yeah. never reached out. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, quick ad break. This video is brought to you by Erica's amazing training on how to run a successful Squarespace template shop. She's put together all of her years of knowledge on what your shop needs in order to sell thousands of templates too. It's not every day that the owner of a million dollar template shop spills all. So go ahead and register for her free training. I will link it above and also for you down below. The other thing which I know is so important is the demo content which you sh choose to show in the example. I remember Squarespace specifically has spoken about this, is that people tend to choose the template just on their Squarespace website yeah. based off whatever the demo content is. So if you're a financial advisor and you see a template with a financial advisor as the demo content, they think, well, I have to choose that template. Yeah. How does that go into your thought process? Knowing how people are choosing templates is based off the example demo content fitting their industry of business. How do you deal with that when you're choosing what demo content or example business to show in the template? Yeah, so I think there's like pros and cons to how you could use this, but you're right in that people, even if 
I don't, even if it's unconscious, they'll choose based on what they like the look of or what's in the demo content on the template. So there's pros and cons to that because if you are really specific about the industry or the target audience you're trying to target, that makes it like so easy for you to really capture those people, put the demo content, content in that are going to attract them and they're going to buy that template. So if you want to get specific with your like niche or your ideal client, this is, you know, it's something that you should know. The demo content is really important and you're not going to have an issue attracting those sorts of people if you include that sort of demo content, which is great. So if I'm a rest, if I want to serve restaurants with my templates, I should always make sure all the photos include yeah. Yeah. people sitting at a restaurant yeah. and <laughs> yeah. food and wine and that exactly. sort of thing. And mm -hmm. even like the any if there's any demo text in there, if you are trying to target a specific, mm -hmm. really specific industry like that, then you could, you know, put like restaurant at the mm -hmm. top and just like all those little things are gonna trigger and the people looking at those templates yep. and they're gonna know that oh, this is the one I need to buy. Whereas, so if you're as yours is, your template shop is not industry specific, you're not just trying to target restaurants, yes. you actually consciously don't include specific yeah. indicative content like that? Yeah, so it's a little bit, so for our shop, we have a lot more general templates. There are some that are more industry specific and for those ones we have included demo content that will attract the customer that we want to buy the templates for example the sales pages or like mm -hmm. we've got a template that's got a sales page included and it's kind of more structured for course creators and that's fairly obvious but there are a lot that are quite generic and they can be used in a ton of different industries even if the customer knows that they can change the colors they can change the images and in doing that it completely changes the vibe of the template they still will choose the one they like the look of. So it can be a little bit tricky to navigate that because potentially they might choose the one that they like the colors on over the one that actually probably has the better structure for them. So making sure that they know that they can change the images and the colors and the fonts and the wording in the template, making sure that's really clear to them and trying to guide them in a direction to actually choose a template that is best suited more for like the page structure and the content rather than the colors because those are the things mm -hmm. that are really easy to change and those are the things that completely change the vibe of the template so if you do have a more generic shop like we do where you have a lot of templates that can serve one person and they've kind of got to choose between um, which one would be best making sure you're being really clear about and trying to get the message across to them that Actually, it's the images and the colors and the fonts that really set the vibe and they can change that. Um, but at the end of the day, you're gonna get people who just purchase because they like the look of it. And mm -hmm. you know, that's okay too. If that's what they wanna do, that's fine. I guess it's just something that you've got to navigate. Mm -hmm. And also when you're putting that demo content in for those more generic templates, then um, just making sure to not use anything too specific to any industry if you are trying to like, you know, reach target a, broad, a few, yeah. reach a broader audience, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, next thing is oftentimes with templates, it includes tutorials. So that means it includes how to change up this template or how to do this thing on Squarespace or WordPress or wherever you're making your templates. Can you talk about, do you include the same tutorials for every single template or do you make tutorials specific to each template and kind of time investment on that? Mm -hmm. How do you decide what to do? Yeah, okay, so I think there's like a lot of different things that you can do and not one way is the right way to do it. There is definitely, I think, a bare minimum of what you should include with your template and that's really just like, it could be as simple as a message with information on how the customer is gonna receive the template, like um, how, like what happens after they purchase, how they can access the template and just the really, the bare minimum basics like that. From there, it's pretty common for a lot of Squarespace template designers to include tutorials and guides on how to use the template or how to use Squarespace, but you don't necessarily have to include these. And most people, and what I would recommend if you do want to include some guides, is not creating individual tutorials for every single template mm -hmm. because not only does that take a bunch of time up front, but then if Squarespace updates anything or if you need to change something, you've got to update all videos for all of your templates and it's super painful. I also don't think it's necessary. There's a point where like, cramming too much information into your resources is just- Not helpful. Not helpful. Overwhelming. Yeah, it's overwhelming. And they, yeah, your customer often really only needs like 
enough to get them going, but they don't need a whole like course, course <laughs> on Squarespace. Yeah. So it, it's really up to you. I think the main, like the really important thing about how, like what resources you include is just being very clear up front before they purchase about what they're actually getting. Because in the industry, especially in Squarespace templates, every, everyone does something different and which is great and which is fine. But if one person buys a template from one shop and they get a bunch of resources and they buy a template from another shop and get no resources, that's fine as long as they knew that they were getting no resources because they might have this expectation that, that that's what they all come with. Mm -hmm. So just being very, very clear about what your template includes. And I think if you do that, you can really do whatever you want for the resources. Mm -hmm. So the only instance where you might create separate videos for every template is if your templates are like super complicated, custom coded, or you know have something that isn't either covered in your regular guides or even within like the Squarespace mm -hmm. regular guides or tutorials. Um, like if it's something that you really need to teach the customer about that specific template, then maybe include a little extra. But yeah, it definitely doesn't need like a whole extra video. I think that people get really hung up on these, like on creating the guides. As web designers, it's quite natural for the template, like creating the template process to be quite easy. And then getting to the point where you need to create resources and getting really stuck. So just know that it's not necessary to create an entire course. It's not necessary to create like these really long tutorial videos. You can really do whatever you want. You could even, like I say to my students, you can even create like a, a workbook, like a simple workbook doesn't need to be videos. You could link away to relevant Squarespace tutorial videos because they've already got all the tutorial videos on their website. You know, there's ways you can do it without having to sit down and record an entire course. So don't get hung up on that step and get overwhelmed by that. You're better to just, you know, do that bare minimum, maybe link to some resources and get that template out there. I fully agree with you. Yeah. I, the more, the other thing that we were discussing at dinner the other day was how people often think that it's all these bonuses and extras that they add on to the template that's gonna sell it. And I think both of us kind of came to the conclusion that people buy a template because they love the design. Yeah. So focusing on really good designs is gonna be so much more worthwhile than spending all your time basically creating an yes. entire course, which will take so much time to create and yeah. so much time to update and mm -hmm. really if it already exists online and you could just link to the Squarespace tutorials and they keep them up to date, that's gonna make your life way easier. Yes, 100%. Okay, final thing I was very curious to know, which I'm sure a lot of people watching are as well, is how much time will it actually take me to create a template? You've been at this for a while, you've created quite a few templates, so I'm sure it takes you less time now than it did at the beginning. Yeah. Can you talk about, on average now, how long does it take you to create a template, yeah. a new one? Yeah, so I guess it depends on how big you're wanting this template to be, how many pages it has. Mm -hmm. But I would say generally, if you have any experience working with clients one-on-one, -on -one, it's very similar to that. You don't have the back and forth with the client, which is great, but you still do have like a bit of extra admin and you still need to kind of be looking at your template through the eyes of your client. So, it's a very similar process, and I would say it takes about the same amount of time. So, as a custom project, as a custom mm -hmm. project, yeah, as working one on one with a client. Mm -hmm. That yeah. makes sense. The difference to so obviously you cut out the time which it takes to communicate and onboard and all the things with the client. Yes, but you do add the time of you you're basically bringing the content as opposed to the client bringing the content. So researching yeah. and finding that content probably mm -hmm. in the end takes up a similar amount of time. So if it took someone two weeks to do a web design project, then it'll probably take you two weeks to make a template. Yeah, I would say like that's a really good estimation. And then that's also helpful if you're someone who is working with clients already, you probably know roughly how long it takes you to create a five page website. Creating a five page template, probably very similar, especially mm -hmm. if you're doing that sort of audience research, which I recommend you doing mm -hmm. at the very beginning and finding the content that's gonna work for that person. There's a lot of like little steps in there that are very similar to doing a custom project. So mm -hmm. fairly similar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so clearly you know the template game backwards and forwards. You've been doing this for years. You've sold thousands of them. If someone wants to do what you've done, how do they, how do, they do it? <laughs> Well, watching this video is a good start, but I also have created a really concise, actionable training, completely free that you can sign up to, 
So if you are interested in getting started with a template shop, definitely check that out because you're gonna learn a lot in a short amount of time that you can actually take and basically apply straight away to start creating your template shop. So check it out, get started. You can literally get started making templates like today if you've got a bit of time. So that's gonna be linked below the video and I really hope to see you inside. Fabulous, right? Now, if you're serious about creating and selling website templates, you probably need a little bit more than just one YouTube video to help you. Thankfully, Erica put together a training on how to run a successful Squarespace template shop. I will put the link to that training below for you and also up above. Granted, if you're not even quite sure which website building platform you should create your templates on, then I would suggest you watch this video next as I walk you through the most popular website builders online right now and how to pick which one to learn as a website designer.